WCTV.TV. Eyewitness News at 530 starts now. Now at 530, the big reveal it is finally here. Our very first day with our new state of the art set. We are so excited and so happy we get to share it with you. Plus, pushing for change, President Trump urging the House to agree on the Senate's version of a bill to reform the tax code. Find out what could stand in its way. Also, did Governor Rick Scott's deletion of dozens of voicemails from distressed nursing homes violate the state's public records law? I'm Mike Vasilinda in the state capitol, where one group wants the state attorney to investigate. I've got the story coming up. A major move in the fight against opioids in Florida. Thanks for joining us at 530 and welcome to our new home. I'm Ben Kaplan and I'm Abby Walton. The House and Senate today filing a bill that would limit first time prescriptions of opioids to a three day supply. It's just the latest move to end the growing crisis. Jake Stofan shows us how this latest move. In an effort to combat the growing opioid epidemic in the state, lawmakers are targeting the issue at its source, which for many addicts begins at the doctor's office. Two steps in the room, and there's my baby on the bed dead. The woman featured in this Florida Senate video is Elizabeth Pine. She recorded the interview to support the new legislation after losing her son to a heroin overdose. He became hooked after being overprescribed Oxycontin. His death is a scenario that plays out all too often, according to the Florida Alcohol and Drug Abuse Association. 80% of the people on heroin started on prescription opioids. Overprescribing is also being blamed for the availability of the drugs on the street. The physician gave a 90 day prescription, a 60 day prescription, and the individual only took three days. And somehow the pills get stolen or somebody sells them. To make a dent in the overprescribing of opioids, the proposed legislation would cap prescriptions at a three day supply with the option for a week if a doctor deems it necessary. Not all patients would be limited to a three day supply or even a week supply, but exemptions are still yet to be spelled out in the bill. Folks who are dealing with terminal illnesses and need this medication in that last stage of their life, we want to make sure that there is a provision in the bill that allows them to get that medication. At least 17 states put limits on how many opioids can be prescribed by doctors. Jake Stofan, WCTV Eyewitness News, Tallahassee. In the first half of 2016, more than 3,000 people died from prescription drug use. That's according to a report by the Florida Medical Examiner's Commission. We first showed you this video a few weeks ago, footage showing teens in a Florida juvenile detention facility fighting egged on by a staff member. Those images and others of guards beating kids with brooms and flashlights is causing a concern in the state capitol. Florida spends over $200 million a year locking kids up. Money FSU researcher Deborah Brodsky says is not well spent. So we're spending $200 million a year on the residential uh, facilities in Florida, and we are getting 45, 46% recidivism one year out. Kids are going back into the system. That to me shows um, abysmal failure. Last week, the governor said he has confidence in the juvenile justice secretary. Lawmakers will hold more hearings on juvenile justice later this week. President Trump eager to get tax reform through Congress. But as Mola Lange reports, to get to it, he needs the House to move quickly on a $4 trillion budget proposal. It, and I call it tax cuts. It is tax reform also, but I call it tax cuts. It'll be the biggest cuts ever in the history of this country. President Trump is pressuring House Republicans to quickly approve the Senate budget plan passed last week so they can move on to tax reform. During a conference call Sunday, the president told lawmakers, we are on the verge of doing something very, very historic. <laughs> president Trump dispatched his daughter Ivanka to Bucks County, Pennsylvania to tout the tax reform plan at a town hall meeting. The total complexity that exists today only benefits one group of people, the people who can afford to hire the armies of lawyers and accountants and lobbyists. Getting tax reform through Congress won't be easy. That's why the president is making a trip to Capitol Hill Tuesday to meet with Senate Republicans. This plan stinks. Democratic leader Chuck Schumer is putting pressure on Republicans in some swing states because the tax outline calls for an elimination of deductions for state and local taxes. State and local deductibility is a dagger aimed at the heart of New York and particularly of so many of our middle class residents. Republicans say the loss of the deduction for state and local taxes would be eased by a proposed doubling of the standard deduction. Mola Lenghi, CBS News, the White House. 
California, New York, New Jersey, Illinois, Texas, and Pennsylvania claim more than half of the state and local tax deductions and would be hit the hardest by its elimination. The sentencing hearing for Army Sergeant Bo Bergdahl is now underway. The proceedings at Fort Bragg lasting less than 90 minutes before adjourning. Last week, Bergdahl pleaded guilty to desertion and misbehavior before the enemy. These charges stemming from 2009 when Bergdahl left his post in Afghanistan, later getting captured by the Taliban. He faces possible life in prison. It's been almost a month since Hurricane Maria hit Puerto Rico and many residents are still trying to recover. But much of the aid they're getting isn't coming from the U.S. government. Instead, it's coming from fellow American citizens. Individuals and companies are flying in supplies and flying out evacuees. More details are coming out tonight concerning 14 deaths during Irma at a Florida rehab center. As Mike Vasalinda tells us, the Florida Alliance of Retired Americans is now stepping in, looking to see if Governor Scott violated the state's public records law. More than 50 times, nursing home operators, including the home where 14 eventually died, got this message when they called the governor's cell phone seeking help during Hurricane Irma. Your call has been forwarded to an automated voice messaging system. The voicemails, according to the governor's office, were transcribed for action, then deleted. Just before noon Monday, the Florida Alliance for Retired Americans called for an investigation. We will never know exactly what was said. and. It, it, it is, I would think, um, inappropriate to destroy that message because it is transmitting knowledge. Scott's office had said he acted lawfully because the records were transitory and of no future value. Hours after the Alliance asked for an investigation, the state attorney said there would be none. Here it appears clear that they, they were noted delegated out and just as the governor's office has suggested they were then deleted so that other voice messages conceivably could come in so i don't believe there's any violation of florida law and as such no need for a criminal investigation the driving force behind the alliance barbara devane is a well-known advocate for mostly democratic issues before the decision we asked her if her call to investigate was politically motivated but you're not trying to embarrass the governor First. No, I'm just trying to get some answers and some protection. The nursing home deaths are expected to be a political hot potato if the governor decides to run for the U.S. Senate next year. Mike Vassalinda, WCTV Eyewitness News, Tallahassee. And Scott's potential run for the U.S. Senate against incumbent Democrat Bill Nelson, so widely expected no other known GOP candidate has entered the race. Well, let's take a look outside yes, now. Man, the wow. difference a few hours can make. <laughs> it looks beautiful outside, but this morning, Ugh. a Monday, a sloppy and a mess. Rainy Monday at that, but you yeah. know what? I'm okay with that because I am hoping, Mike McCall, that that means cooler temperatures mm. are on the way. That's what I'm hoping for. We are all crossing our fingers, Mike. Well, you could probably uncross them and just enjoy. Start, okay. start frolicking. All right, that's what we like to hear. Frolicking, all right. It, 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 it's not quite here yet. In fact, it's still pretty warm outside, but this is all part of the system that is going to make things delightful for us. And you can see that radar has almost completely cleared out. We still have a little tiny bit of rain as you head out toward the eastern section. So over into Eccles County, we're still seeing a couple showers and a sprinkle or two down around Madison County, but they're moving on out toward the east. And when you look at the wider picture, the clouds are moving on out, and these clear skies you see back here, they're going to bring in some cooler temperatures. Now, I mentioned they're not here just yet. We still have some upper 70s, even mid-80s right now in Tallahassee at 84. But we're talking about some 40s coming back from morning lows by the time we get to Wednesday morning. And there's another cold front on the way by the weekend. So we'll tell you what that means for your rain chances and more colder air mm. coming up in just a little bit. Let's frolic. Let's yes, frolic. right? And, and no crossing the fingers. Yes. Spread wide apart. Okay. All right. Thanks, Mike. Right. Well, in some consumer news at 530, if you have a MasterCard, you need to listen up. Starting in April, the company will not require a signature for debit and credit card transactions. The reason? People just complaining it's too time consuming. MasterCard also saying there's not really a point anymore given security measures like card chip technology. Target is taking a new approach this holiday season. The retailer is streamlining its number of promotions, placing hundreds of gifts that cost around 15 bucks throughout stores and expanding its marketing focus beyond traditional families. The company saying after a disappointing holiday season last year and confusing sales, it wants to keep things simple and prices lower for shoppers. It's also making sure Thanksgiving doesn't get lost in the early push for Christmas. Well, I agree with them on that, but yeah. I still can't believe we are talking about the holidays already.
sometimes I have to actually look at the calendar and see where we're at. There's been so much well, going on. Far, yeah. yeah, right, that we're moving into November. Oof. I know, it's hard to hard believe. Hard to believe, that's for sure. Well, still to come at 530, all that safety yeah. tech in your car, it could cost you. Not just when you buy it, but also when you insure it. Why your premiums could go up, coming up next. Hi, I'm WCTV's Eden Schultz, and I wanted to show you another great thing about the new studios that we're debuting here today, and that's this giant glass wall between the studio and the newsroom. Now, the newsroom is the nerve center where we're gathering all the raw information and getting ready to put it on the air, and so having it right next to the studio is going to be great for getting the information to you as quickly and accurately as possible. And we'll be right back. 